In this video, I'm going to discuss how solution stoichiometry problems can be solved using BCA tables. Recall that when we are looking at stoichiometry with a BCA table, we first have to begin with a balanced chemical equation. Moles are going to be used within the table. The coefficients in the balanced equation are used to determine values in the change line. And that to get into or out of the table, we may be using mass, or in this chapter we see that we can use solution information like concentration and volume. When we look at concentration, oftentimes we're going to be looking at molarity, which is defined as moles of solute for total volume in liters of the solution. So a 0.15 molar solution of sodium hydroxide is 0.15 moles of sodium hydroxide in the one liter. With stoichiometry problems, we're going to be using moles. I think we are skilled at converting between grams to moles, but let's see how it applies with solutions. For converting 25 grams of sodium hydroxide to moles, what would we do? Well, we'd look to the molar mass. If we have 25 grams of sodium hydroxide, if you add up the masses for sodium, oxygen, and hydrogen, it gets you to 40 grams per mole. So we use the molar mass to convert from grams to moles. What about concentration? We are asked to convert 75 mils of a 0.1500 molar sodium hydroxide solution to moles? Well, 0.1500 molar sodium hydroxide, if we look back at the definition, and I find it helpful to write out what the actual definition for molarity is, we have 0.1500 moles of sodium hydroxide for every one liter of solution. We don't have one liter of solution, we have 75 milliliters. So that was converted to liters, and we can then see how many moles of sodium hydroxide we have within that solution. What we're doing is we're combining the concentration of the solution in molarity times the volume in liters to get number of moles. This relationship here, in order to get number of moles, it's the same kind of thing that we did when we used the molar mass, but now we're using the concentration and the volume information. Let's see how that applies in this question. What is the minimum amount of a HCl solution needed to neutralize a calcium hydroxide solution? So this is an acid-base reaction. So let's start out with a balanced equation. And let's summarize what happens within our BCA tables. Just like chapter 3, we begin with a balanced chemical equation. Be very careful here. Within the balanced neutralization reaction, Notice it takes two moles of HCl to react with one mole of the calcium hydroxide. You have to get the balanced chemical equation right to start with. We have all of the information we need to say how much calcium hydroxide did we have before the reaction took place. By all the information we have, it's concentration and molarity. We have its volume. So we can convert and determine the number of moles of calcium hydroxide that was initially present. It's going to be neutralized, which means all of this calcium hydroxide gets consumed in the reaction. How much HCl did we need in order to consume it? Once again, the change line is consistent with the coefficients in the balanced chemical equation. We see in the balanced chemical equation, two moles of HCl react with every one mole of calcium hydroxide. We can now look at the simple proportion to determine how many moles of HCl reacted when we had 0 0.003378 moles of calcium hydroxide react. We get our change line for the HCl, so therefore that's the amount that we needed to start with. We needed 0 0.006756 moles of HCl in order to neutralize all of the calcium hydroxide. The question is asking, what is that amount in terms of its volume? The concentration of the HCl is given. We have now determined the number of moles of HCl that we need, so the only variable that remains is its volume. We solve for the volume in liters, and we could also express that in milliliters. The BCA table is used to keep track of all of these steps. This question is a little bit different. It involves standardizing a solution. It said that a chemist dissolves some monoprotic acid in about 50 mils of water. The base is added to this, and after 25.49 milliliters of base, the equivalence point is reached. The molar mass of this monoprotic acid called KHP is listed. The question is, what is the concentration of the base? That's the point of this uh, experiment. 
standardizing the solution means to precisely determine the concentration of the base in this case. So we're using the monoprotic acid KHP to do that. Here's the molecule KHP, which is shorthand for potassium hydrogen phthalate. We don't really need to know the specific formula for it. We do need to use the information that it's monoprotic and its particular molar mass. The reason monoprotic is important is because we're going to have a neutralization reaction in which the KHP reacts with the sodium hydroxide. Monoprotic allows us to say that for every one KHP, it's reacting with one sodium hydroxide. If our goal is to begin with a balanced chemical equation, we need to have that information. We know the information based on the number of grams of the KHP and its molar mass. We can determine how many moles of KHP we have to start with. Notice it said that it is dissolved in about 50 milliliters of water. That's not important for the problem. We needed to take the solid and dissolve it so it can be involved within the reaction. But within our BCA table, we are not putting concentration. We're putting moles. So the specific amount of water is not important. In fact, we had a clue because it says it's added to about 50 mils of water. All of the KHP is going to be consumed because we are going to reach the equivalence point. Within the equivalence point, we find that a stoichiometric amount of the acid and the base have combined. This is simply saying that based on the balanced equation, the amount of KHP that we've had has completely reacted with the amount of sodium hydroxide. Since we know the amount of sodium hydroxide that was consumed, we know how much we started with in the initial solution. That was our goal, to determine the number of moles that were in the initial solution. Once we know the number of moles and the volume that it took to reach the equivalence point, we only have one more variable, the concentration of that initial solution. So we've determined the concentration by reacting it with a known amount of KHP. The key idea here within that was that the mass of the KHP was important, not its concentration. Here's an exam question that involves some solution stoichiometry. We're given a balanced chemical equation and we're given solution information about hydrochloric acid. And we're being asked to solve something about the mass of the magnesium metal that was present. Since this is a stoichiometry problem, let's summarize it with the BCA table. We have information about the solution. The concentration and the volume in liters is being used to determine the number of moles of HCl that we initially had. All of that was consumed in the reaction. How much magnesium was involved with the reaction? If we look back at the balanced chemical equation, 1 mg goes with 2 HCLs. So now we can do the simple proportion to figure out our change line. How many moles of mg were involved? And that would be the number of moles that we started with. We're not asked number of moles of the magnesium, we're asked how many grams of it. So we'll simply use the molar mass for magnesium, since we have now determined the number of moles that were involved in the reaction, to determine the number of grams. Here's another exam question. Sod solid sodium oxalate is dissolved in water and then titrated with some potassium permanganate solution. And we have a balanced chemical equation there. The question is, which of these titrations requires the most of the potassium permanganate to reach the equivalence point? And it looks like there's a lot of things we have to work through here. We have different amounts of solid and different, am different amounts of water. Given that, I think we're going to have different concentrations. But remember, even though these have different concentrations of sodium oxalate, concentration does not go into the BCA table. The number of moles goes into the BCA table. So if we simply look at the one with the largest mass, that is the one that will require the most potassium permanganate to reach the equivalence point. So even though this looks like there are a lot of things to solve, it is simply asking what is important in the BCA table? Is it concentration or is it number of moles? If we know it's number of moles, we can simply look for the one with the largest mass. Several examples were described here involving BCA tables. The plan was the same for everyone. 
students often struggle with solution stoichiometry questions because it sure seems like so many different formats and different ways the questions can be asked. However, if it's a stoichiometry problem, it can always be solved using a BCA table. That includes examples using solutions. Using the same organization plan, the BCA table, is a really great way to make sense of solution stoichiometry questions. By having the same approach each time, it can give clarity and it really helps with your problem solving.